wonderful passage of scripture that we will spend today's sermon reflecting on. Uh, part of what I am convinced is uh, that for all of the great things that uh, may have happened in our lives during this month, uh, it makes no sense for us to uh, just engage in this process without being changed. Amen. It makes no sense for us to engage in these practices and remain the same. Uh, that God would have us to be different at the end of such a, a commitment. Amen? That uh, there's some things in our lives that God would like to transform. And, and some of what I think is uh, part of that process is for us to take what I like to call a good diary. Take some good uh, notes and, and, and a record of all the work that God is doing in our lives and figure out uh, are there some lessons that can be learned and applied for the rest of the year. Now the book of Isaiah is a great example because Isaiah was a major prophet meaning that he was one of these four uh, big kind of prophets in the history of the Jewish nation and the role of the prophet always in the life of Israel was to remind them of their covenant responsibility to God. Now, a covenant is nothing more than a sacred contract between God and a group of people or even an individual. And there were very few groups of people in the <clears throat> scriptures that uh, God entered into a covenant with, and the children of Israel were one of them. And during this kind of covenant-making process with the children of Israel, God made this covenant with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and every generation thereafter, they would all commit themselves to agree to live their life out this way. But if you read the history of Israel, particularly in the biblical text, you will see that they always had this roller coaster journey with God. That sometimes they were really good at keeping their covenant responsibilities, and other times they kind of were slack. And what's great about the biblical text is that it shows that God's consistency remains the same. Even though we may have ups and downs, and how many of you know you have ups and downs in your relationship with God? Yeah? All right. Well, let's, 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 be, let's be telling the truth here. Amen. While you at church, somebody said amen, right? Amen. How many of you know there are moments in your life where you have great faith, but there are other moments where your faith is, is, is a little shaky? There, there, there are times in your life where you understand what God is doing. It's kind of like you like a Jedi, you know, you like moving in the force and you just in tune and then other times you are out of tune. You know, one of the best ways that I can you know, explain this is like with radios, you know, like if, if, if we were trying to get tapped into a radio frequency, um, how many of you know that when we cannot get the signal or get a clear uh, sound of the radio, it is not because the radio waves are not present. I mean, there are radio waves right now just hovering all over up above your head. And the, 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 the challenge for us is not the radio waves, but the challenge is for us to what? Get in tune, get on the right frequency. And sometimes part of what this process of our salvation and our walk with God is a, a process of us being in tune with what God is doing. And the consecration serves as an opportunity for many of us to take care, special care, to pause what's going on in our lives and get in alignment with God. Hello, somebody. The consecration is intended for you and I to cease from certain kinds of activities and in its place engage in other activities that would facilitate the kind of uh, alignment with God. And part of what we want to talk a little bit about today is what does it mean for us to not only engage in that process, but keep a diary of it. Why? So uh, you won't forget all the great things you're learning during this process. How many of you know, again, uh, it would be such a tragedy to have learned so much about God during this intense spiritual boot camp of the consecration? And then come April, June, or maybe even tomorrow, you forget. <laughs> because life has gotten so hard. 
All right? So give your neighbor a quick high five and tell them, let's learn to keep a diary. Here we go. And, you know, brothers, you know, diaries are okay. If you don't like that word, you can say a journal. All right? And brothers, I don't know, brothers, come from keep a diary. You can just, anytime you see diaries, say journal. I'm keeping a journal. <laughs> Call it what you want. Write it down. Do something. Here we go. Isaiah chapter number 63, verse 7. Here's what the word of the Lord says. I will recount the gracious deed of the Lord. The praiseworthy acts of the Lord because of all that the Lord has done for us and the great favor he has shown to the house of Israel according to his mercy and according to the abundance of his steadfast love. Amen. For God said, surely they are my people. Children who will not deal falsely in all their distress. Boy, I love me that passage. For it was no messenger or angel, but it was his presence that saved them. And in his love and pity, he redeemed them and lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. The word of God for us, the people of God, let us say thanks be to God. Right, so we're going to spend a few moments uh, just on the topic today, uh, the diary of a consecration. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless the word of God that has been read for us, the people of God. We ask you to hide this word in our hearts so we will not sin against you. And please send your anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. Touch my body, my heart, my mind, my soul, and even the hearers as well. So we may grow in the name of Jesus of Christ, we pray. Let the people of God say amen. Give your neighbor a high five and tell them I'm going to keep a diary or a journal. All right. Now, I want you to just pay attention real quick because I want to read the passage one more time, but I want to read it in the message translation. All right. It's a little bit more plain English. Just hear the word of scripture as, as we read it. We'll reread it one more time. Uh, and, and here's what the word says. I must make a list of God's gracious dealings. All the things that God has done that need praising, all the generous bounties of God, His great goodness to the family of Israel, how He lavished compassion and extravagant love. For He said, without question, these are my people, children who will never betray me. So he became their savior in all their troubles. He was troubled too. He didn't send someone else to help them, but he did it himself in person. Out of his own love and pity, he redeemed them, he rescued them, and carried them for a long, long time. Because sometimes life can get so difficult and so hard that we can easily forget how consistent and faithful God is. I mean, if you're like me, we have to deal with a lot of foolishness every day. Whether it's your own foolishness or the foolishness of others. How many of you know that foolishness is still just foolishness? You know, you get around certain folk and you act different. 
of New York City. It was just so cold. <laughs> Even with all of my energy and purpose and desire, the physical limitations of my body could not keep up with the demands. I had to take a break. Yet in the midst of all of the struggles happening in your life, I want you to know and appreciate that the God you serve never tires. Never takes a day off. God can do all nighters every night for eternity to take good care of us. You ought to give your neighbor a high five and tell them that's a great promise. Yeah, that's a great, a great promise. Reservation, dare I say, date with God. You have dates with everyone else. You got dates with your homies, dates with your boo, you got dates with your, your partners, dates with your friends, dates with your, you know, all kind of dates. But 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 how many of you know God would love to have some one-on-one -on -one time with you? And not just one-on-one -on -one time, but you doing all the talking. Because how many of you know we get in our trouble? We, you know, we un, not, this is an unscheduled date, right? And he, the song Jesus on the main line, tell them what you want, right? It's like, God, I need you right now. I need to hurry up and you can just talk to God for an hour and you say, thank you, bye. Can you imagine someone just called you and he's like, hello, and they just talked to you for an hour and then they said bye? It's like, I hope that was good for you. <laughs> Sometimes God wants you to spend some time in his presence so you can. Walgreens, diaper section, don't know what we 
Pinocchio over there doing? <laughs> God becoming your savior is about 
that I trust God more to heaven. And then there are other parts of my life where I just wish God would just stay out of my business. Somebody say amen, right? God, you can deal with my money, but don't touch my honey. <laughs> you can deal with my job, but don't mess with my career. You can deal with my marriage, but my children just leave that up to me. It is almost, you know, growing up, you know, my grandmother used to have, you know, these, 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 these chairs in our house, you know, that uh, we, we could not sit on. Right? And it's like, ooh, this, this you know, the, 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 the forbidden nature of it, it just draws you like a monster, at least for me. <laughs> and I always love to do stuff people they want me to do. And then, like, they, 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 they didn't get better, thank you, Mom, they didn't get better to, 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 to just tell me, you should go sit on that couch. And I'm like, oh, that's no fun. <laughs> Spin the final thing that I'll lift up and we'll spin it. 
few moments in some reflection and prayer. Of 
the Lord. Get the last slide. You know, there's some reflection questions we put up there. I, I, I just feel so moved to invite some of us, these yellow connection cards. You may have a prayer request. Something that you need God to do for you this last week. An issue and a struggle that you need God to work out. A challenge. As you are engaging this last week of consecration, and you want this whole week to be dedicated to this one thing. It can be anonymous. I'm going to ask you to write your name on it. You can just write the situation. Fold it in half from the early service. Folks can drop some of this on the altar. Tuesday night, there will be prayer here. You're invited to come out. Believe starts at 5 30, 6 o'clock. I'll be here praying on Wednesday at 6.30, 7 o'clock. And then we'll end the consecration. All you that are willing and able on Friday will meet here at 6.30. And we'll pray for an hour or so. End the consecration together and ask God to seal and solidify whatever it is we need God to do. that you must remember from this consecration that you must keep track of in your dream of some things God spoke to you. And there's some challenges that are still left unmet. Things you need to grow. You ought to keep that and write that in your journal or your diary. And there's some practices that you need to commit to continuing. Some of us during this consecration have learned to stop gossiping, have learned to stop hating, fighting, Cheating, lying, stealing. We've learned to start forgiving. There may be some practices that you need to commit yourself to engaging in. Some of you may have some situations that you say, Pastor Mike, I need this whole church to pray for me. Because this is a struggle that I'm going through. Whatever that thing may be, if you feel so led, write it down on your little yellow connection card. And you can bring it up to the altar. You can bring it as you come around for offering. And just lay it in. I believe that God can do a miracle in your life. I believe God can do something for you and your family that everyone will know that had to be God. That it could have been your connections. It could have been your wisdom. 